Uh, let's talk about uh, the Chinese retail market. Uh, this is a huge, huge opportunity. How many people here are selling their products in China? Come on, a little higher. Come on, I gotta see. Okay, it is like, yeah, John Tong, you're from China. What are you doing? Uh, my friend John Tong out there just raised his hand. So we only got a couple people, and, and it's shocking. And, and, and let me tell you why. First of all, um, the, the, the Chinese government has strongly encouraged a consumer uh, a market in China. So there's a, there's a lot of desire for consumer goods. And they have ended the one-child policy in China, which uh, kept it so you only had um, you can only have one child per family, and they've now increased that to two. So the population is growing. But, but I thought you would find this interesting. Here's a comparison of Germany and China. And then first of all, the total population of China is almost one and a half billion. Germany is 82 million. Uh, there's two and a half, 204 million children in China between zero and 12. There's 9.1. One five million in Germany. So they have what? That's ten times. That's about twelve, thirteen times more kids than in Germany. Um, they have a higher birth rate, and their toy market value is almost five times higher than Germany. But yet, nobody in a room is selling in China. And and so I think we really need to um, to take a hard look at that. Now I've, I've got a. Uh, a video I'm going to show you here, and I, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's going to show you, starting I think in like about 1970s, the progression of um, GDP between the USA, the European Union, China, Asia, and Japan. Can we go ahead and run the video? So this is in 1961, and over on the right-hand side, you're going to notice there's total exports, the urban population, and the GDP per capita. And as you can see, the USA is, of course, is right up at the top. European Union is is closing in, and uh, kind of Asia is down here uh, near the bottom. Now we're up to 1968, and you can see the Japanese economy starting to really to take off. But, but a huge gap. And here's in the 1970s, the European Union really starts to accelerate and uh, passes the United States in terms of GDP. And Japan is, is doing a lot, is, is getting a lot stronger, but you can see it's still quite a bit below those, those two countries. This is, uh, we're now into 1980. And all of a sudden the U.S. makes a comeback. Passes the European Union. And Japan's staying pretty steady. And now we're in the mid 1980s. Here comes the European Union. Back up on the outside. Passes the USA. And Japan has the highest GDP per capita at that time. As you can see, European Union has the most total exports. You see that down on the right hand side? Uh, that blue bar on top is the European Union. And, and it, this was in the 90s, Japanese economy is very strong. And now we've hit 2000.
and the United States has uh, passed Japan in per capita dollars. The European Union is still by far the strongest in terms of total exports. And I think what's really interesting, look at the percentage of urban population on the right. You see where Japan has almost 86% of its population lives in urban areas. Now, this 2007 is the Great Recession. And watch China. You see China moving up? And you can see this rapid growth. And the European Union still uh, is exceeding them in exports, almost by three times. In the United States, uh, here's in 2017, as you can see, uh, China, uh, very much um, a power player. So, uh, again, the big, th the, the big issue, I think, is um, are you selling your products in China? And uh, if you're not, you need to find out how to do it safely uh, and how to do it um, uh, in, in the right amount of time. It's, it's not something you rush. You, you've got to plan your way in.